Okay, so OpenAI released a brand new version of GPT-5 called GPT-5 Codex, and I'll be trying out in this video on real-world production code bases to see how it stacks up against GPT-5, the previous version, and also Cloud Opus 4.1. I'll first be going through the benchmarks, but if you want to skip ahead, then there are timestamps down below. Basically, GPT-5 Codex is a version of GPT-5 further optimized for agentic coding in Codex. And one of the biggest improvements you can see is that on code refactoring tasks, it gets a much higher score than GPT-5. And during one of their own refactors, it seems a We've seen GPT-5 Codex work independently for more than seven hours at a time on large complex tasks, iterating on its implementation, fixing test failures, and ultimately delivering a successful implementation. And for the OpenAI employee traffic over here, they've seen that with each turn of the model, whenever it gives a response how many tokens are used, the bottom 10% have seen a 90% reduction in the amount of tokens used, which means that it should feel snappier and like shorter for those like well-defined smaller tasks. And for like more challenging tasks, such as over here in the 90th percentile, it should think for longer and also perhaps give a better solution. And you can see that over here, it seems better at writing high impact comments and also doesn't leave as many inaccurate comments as well. Now it is available in version 0.36, so you want to make sure that you're updated to that version. And one of the ways that you can tell it's been optimized is that if you go to Codex System Prompt and compare it to the original one, so this is the original one over here, it's about 310 lines, whereas the Codex one is about 100 lines. So it seems that a lot of the best practices of the System Prompt itself is baked into the fine tuning or the training of the model or basically whatever they've done to the model. All right, so I'll be trying out GPT-5 and GPT-5 Codex via Codex CLI and also comparing it against each other and to Claude Opus 4.1 via Claude Code on these two real-world production code bases. So the first of which is an AI news application that I made that basically helps stay up to date with the latest AI news. And you can download it and use it for free from the Google Play Store and the App Store. And it is about 26,700 lines of code. So it's like reasonably sized. And then another application I'll be testing on is Colearn, which is an application that I made independently and then sold for about $200,000 to someone else. And basically it's like a B2B SaaS that's targeted at community owners. And it is about 42,000 lines of code. And the main thing I want to do with this is a big refresh factor, just like the seven hour refactor that they stated they did. I did get permission from the new owner and they said I can use it as long as I don't reveal too much of the code basically. And if you're interested in the techniques that I use to build and scale this, then I cover a lot to do with that in my AI startup school over here. And basically a bunch of people have gone for it and had success with their own software and applications as well that you can see over here. And one part people have found especially useful is being able to ask me any question regarding their own applications that they're making, such as how they would implement a certain thing, whether a certain thing is worth making given them market and being able to get feedback on their ideas and their products for myself and other people as well. There's a link down below if you do want to join it. Okay, so the first test is to make sure that GPT-5 Codex does not run into this problem. One thing I noticed with using Cloud Code and GPT-5 in some cases is that it likes to define the same type or like interface again rather than importing it from wherever it's been defined before. This also applies to functions as well. It also likes to define the same function again, rather than importing it from where it's already been defined in the code base. And the problem with that ends up being that when it makes a future upgrade to one of the functions, the functions or types slowly fall out of sync and then more bugs arise because of that. And this problem has happened to me literally dozens of times. And one of the ways that I got around this is by using another model. So for example, I would use Cloud Code to write a lot of the code. And then I would use Code CLI to check the code that Cloud Code Code had written to make sure there weren't any like duplicates such as this. And I have talked about this before on another video called Codex CLI Just Fixed Cloud Code, which you can watch as well. Okay, an example that I just found in my code base for Tensor AI over here is that you can see I have sponsor config defined as an interface in a shared types file. And I also have sponsor config defined over here. And I did not do this, like Cloud Code did this when I was vibe coding it with Cloud Code. And this is a classic example of how bugs can arise in a vibe coded code base. All right, so I'm going to update my version of Codex because it's been a while since I've updated it. So press enter over here. And then I'm going to run Cloud in one of the folders, so the Tensor AI folder. And then I'm going to run Codex in an exact duplicate of that folder, which is Tensor AI Codex. And you can see it says introducing GPT-5 Codex here. Press enter. And now for the models, I'll use Opus 4.1. And I will also use model... GPT-5 Codex Hi, and using my tool HyperWhisper coupon code down below, I'm going to say, hey, so can you find any types or interfaces that are used twice or multiple times throughout the code base and then consolidate them to prevent like any repetition? And now I'm going to press enter over here 
and then enter over here. So you can see that Cloud Code has already started making changes over here, whereas Codex is still exploring the code base. And now GPT-5 Codex is already done, despite spending more time like exploring the code base. Okay, so I also gave the same prompt to GPT-5 High, and it seems they're all done. So I'm going to compare how good of a job they all did. Okay, so first comparing GPT-5 High and GPT-5 Codex High, you can see the two solutions are almost identical, where for every page on the onboarding, it like replaces the type that's defined at the top, and then makes a brand new type in a types folder over here, and then imports it onto all the pages. And then they both identified the duplicate type over here, which I mentioned earlier. But the only difference is that GPT-5 Codex High decides to export the sponsor language over here, and then import it into mobile API routes over here. And looking at Cloud Code, it identified all the same types that were duplicates, but it also identified two over here between article list provider and also the language provider here. And then it basically moved all the types into the same shared types folder. So I'm actually not sure here, GPT-5 codex was slightly better than GPT-5 because it considered one particular case that GPT-5 did not consider, but it seems that cloud code was slightly more extensive as well. But if I'm going to pick one of the solutions, I'm going to go with GPT-5 codex because it seems simpler and gets the main thing done that I wanted it to. Okay, now let's see how all three of them compare when it comes to implementing new features. So one of the pieces of feedback that I got is adding an unseen marker and an archive option over here. So when I open up the application, you can see these are all the latest AI news. Uh, this is the all page. And basically, I think what this person wants is when I swipe like right, there's an archive option where it no longer appears in the list. And when I swipe left, then I can probably like mark it as unseen. So with a new chat, I'm going to describe this to all three models and then see how they compare when coming to a solution. Hey, so on the mobile application homepage, on the list, can you add an option where if I swipe from right to left, then there's an option for me to archive the article and then I no longer see it. You should add the relevant database migration for this. And if I swipe left to right, then there's an option for me to star the article and unstar it. Adds it to a starred folder and removes it from the starred folder as well. You should make a brand new provider to deal with starring articles, perhaps. Basically, let's see what you come up with. And I'll give all three of them the same prompt and then press enter and see what they come up with. And now GPT-5 High is already done and GPT-5 Codex High is still running over here. So basically, because it's still going, it makes me think that what they showed here on the graph is true because in the 90th percentile of use cases, it does generate more tokens per response, which probably means that it's going to be implementing a more comprehensive solution, but we'll see what actually happens. And by the looks of it, it seems that it might actually finish off at the same time as Opus 4.1 here. All right, so it seems that all of them are done, so let's test them out. Okay, so this is a cloud code solution. If I swipe left, there's an archive button, archive over here, and it disappears. If I swipe right, then there's a star button, but it doesn't actually add it on the star tab over here. So maybe I did not explain that properly, or maybe just didn't implement it. All right, so this is the GPT-5 high version, and it seems archive over here works. Star over here, did it actually make a star? It did make a star folder right over here. And it seems it actually made two different star folders over here. Okay, now here's a GPT-5 codex solution. And if I swipe left and swipe right, Seems to work. Archive seems to work. Star seems to not actually work. Can I unstar it? Star, star. It added it to bookmarks, but it didn't actually move it to a star folder. And it seems that all three of them faced a similar solution where you can kind of see that like when I'm like halfway moving it, but I think that can be fixed pretty easily. So overall, it seems that GPT-5 and GPT-5 Codex is better than Opus 4.1 because it actually made a starred folder, like I said, but GPT-5 normal actually added it to a starred folder despite making two of the folders and GPT-5 Codex did not do it. So I think this is something that can be easily iterated upon. Okay, now I'm curious whether GPT-5 Codex is able to do one of those seven hour long refactors that they talked about. And basically, this entire application was made using the Pages Router in Next.js. I'm going to switch it to the Apps Router instead and basically see how GPT-5 High and GPT-5 Codex High both perform. Hey, so this application was made using the Next.js Pages Router. Can you rewrite it so it uses the Next.js Apps Router instead and then remove the Pages directory? Make sure no functionality is lost whatsoever. Everything should be in the same position and place and basically 
it should feel like the same application. Okay, so this is going to run on GPT-5 codex high, and this is going to run on GPT-5 high. And bear in mind that both running in different folders as well. So I'm actually going to go and get lunch and then come back once this is done. Okay, so I just came back from lunch, and it seems that GPT-5 claims to be done over here, and it used 330,000 tokens. I reviewed the footage, and it took about 22 minutes in total. Whereas GPT-5 codex high, I used 485,000 tokens, and after about 42 minutes of running, it said, I'm sorry, but this migration is taking longer than expected. I'm not able to finish converting the entire project from the pages router to the app router. And then I'm going to say, are you done here? If not, continue. Because sometimes it says that it is done, but it isn't actually done. But honestly, I'm a little surprised that GPT-5 high was running for over 40 minutes on this big refactor migration. But of course, that doesn't really matter unless the code actually is working at the end of it. So I'll be back again once this is actually done. Okay, so now you can see that GPT-5 codex has run for another 30 minutes. And now it says the context window is completely full. So 1 million tokens have been used after about 33 minutes plus 40 minutes. So... 73 minutes. And interestingly enough, it says that it's now hit a wall with finishing the migration. Anyways, either I can probably clear the chat and then tell it to continue on with the migration. And that might take like another hour or two hours, especially because GPT-5 only used 403,000 tokens, whereas GPT-5 codex basically used a million tokens. All right, so you can see here GPT-5 changed 127 files here. And basically, there is no more pages router. Everything is in the app router here. And I guess it does look good, but let's run it just to make sure. So I'll do npm run dev, but it does look kind of concerning because it deleted 5,355 lines, but only added 3,176 lines. Uh, so maybe some things will be missing in this code base now. All right, well, it's not loading. It seems to have not done a good job because it is missing a lot of like use client directives. Uh, so overall, like I guess it made a lot of changes but didn't actually implement it properly. Now let's stop that and try again with the GPT-5 codex version, npm run dev. It seems to have made or edited this many files, but I don't think it actually deleted the pages router yet because it didn't actually finish the migration and hit the context window before then. Uh, so let's delete the pages router ourselves and see how well this works. Yeah, and like it said, it can't resolve Tanstack query. So let me actually clear the chat and then get a try again. And just to be fair, let's make a GPT-5 high try again as well. All right, so it seems that GPT-5 codex fixed its React query error, but now it's giving a totally different error to do with use client, just like GPT-5 was doing. And as for GPT-5, let's check over here. And you can see like the landing page flashes like very shortly or very briefly. And then it runs into this error where like the key value is missing or something like that. So honestly, I think with the new upgrade to Codex CLI, whilst it may actually be better code refactoring tasks, it probably is limited to like one file or a couple files, not like over a hundred files across the entire code base, such as what I just did. I have read online that they haven't really released this data set, but I'm imagining that you probably need closer to 70 to 80% for it to actually do the big refactor that I asked it to do. But I think what this also means is that many people who are working in legacy code bases, rather than rewriting the legacy code base, they'd probably wait like another six months or a year for the models to be able to get good enough that they can refactor it in Rust or some other programming language instead of trying to do it themselves. But I think some people may be able to achieve good refactoring right now if they have enough like test coverage across their code base that Codex CLI can constantly keep checking. But honestly, I think the most surprising thing about this to me is that Codex CLI is able to run for like 40 minutes, 35 minutes at a time without being interrupted. I think you can probably push it to over one hour. And there are probably many other use cases that are not coding related that you can probably use Codex CLI to be able to do. Such as if it's running for over an hour, you can probably get it to do incredibly deep research on a particular topic, much deeper than many deep research tools that you'd find online can do. Or you can just have it doing other things as well. At least when it comes to software engineering benchmark, I don't think the jump is that big to notice a massive difference in the sense it can now do many things that I previously couldn't do, for example. But I will be trying out more over the coming week and I'll make another video if I find any good use cases out of it. Anyways, now I think it's pretty good that Anthropic have a serious competitor when it comes to coding models at least. It will probably push them to release Sonnet 4.5, Opus 4.5, or whatever their next model is much sooner. And maybe one of the reasons why Cloud Code has recently dropped in quality, as many people are claiming, is because they're now like pushing for that release date to be sooner and they're using some of the GPUs that would have otherwise been used for Cloud Code to train or finish off training the next model. Anyways, if I do find more 
interesting things about Codex CLI. I will make more videos about them. So do subscribe if you do want to see that as well. And if you are interested in the techniques that I use to scale and sell that previous software, then I do cover a lot of that in my AI startup school. There's a link down below if you're interested.